Now, it can't be overemphasised that correlation does not imply that one variable or one parameter causes another. If two variables do have a strong correlation, then often that's enough for us to say, hey, there might be something going on here, we should check it out. Because it's possible that one is causing the other. But we can't actually confirm this from the correlation. So instead, what we need to do is investigate using other methods. So something like a controlled longitudinal study. So to give you an example, if we're looking at, say, the use of some drug and the incidence of some kind of disease to see if the drug helps to lower the incidence of that disease, we might see that the people who take more of the drug have less disease and think, hey, maybe this is helpful, but the scatter plot won't show us. What we need to do instead is have a controlled study where two groups of people are matched for age, gender, socioeconomic status, a bunch of things, and then we have one group that's getting the drug and the other group that thinks they're getting the drug but they're actually getting a pill that doesn't have the drug in it. And then we look at those two groups over time and we see what the incidence of that disease is. That's how we tell whether the drug has an impact on causing or lessening the incidence of that disease. So definitely finding a correlation is good. It's, it's a reason to do more research, but it doesn't show that anything causes something else. Now, another reason that we can't imply causality just because two variables are correlated is because they may have an association where both of the parameters are caused by some other parameter or maybe some other set of parameters. So to give you an example of that, somebody might find a correlation between something like, say, the number of dental caries people have, the holes in their teeth, and, say, the incidence of diabetes. Now, having holes in your teeth doesn't give you diabetes, and having diabetes doesn't give you holes in your teeth. Those things have been investigated and found not to occur. But they could both be caused by a poor diet. And one of the most important things that we can't forget is that many correlations are purely coincidental. So I've got some ridiculous examples here. We can see that US spending on science, space and technology was found to be very closely correlated with suicides by hanging, strangulation and suffocation. Now, do you think it's likely that the more the government spent on science, the more people hung themselves? Probably not. And yet they are, by coincidence, very closely related. They also found that the number of people who drowned by falling into a pool correlated very closely with the number of films that Nicolas Cage appeared in that year. The per capita cheese consumption was correlated very closely with the number of people who died by becoming tangled in their bed sheets. I'm not sure that having too much cheese for dinner caused them to do that. The divorce rate in Maine just happens to be correlated with the per capita consumption of margarine. Hmm. Here for a 10 year period, the age of Miss America correlated with the number of murders by steam, hot vapors and hot objects. And yet I'm pretty sure that we weren't getting less people dying from steam just because Miss America was a little bit young. 